Welcome, dear friends of Consciousness Research, with Jonathan and Shiva, the Matrixes. Today with a very exciting video. Not that I wouldn't say that every time, but it's still exciting. It's about the most diverse facets of time. Yes, we had already created a series of time travel videos, but this can be seen as an extension of this two-part series. And today it's about timelines and time dilation. Yes, again with his foreign words. We watched a series and thought, and then of course we talked about it and discussed it. The series is called Loki, part two, second season. A little crazy and a little confusing. But very exciting. Fundamentally, yes. We have to talk about that too. Because there are some things we haven't touched on yet. Not even in the time travel videos. And that's what we're doing today. Yes, many people may have noticed that time is going a bit crazy at the moment. We have received letters from tens of people perhaps even hundreds of people all over the world, saying that something is wrong with time or that time seems to be passing much, much faster. At first we thought this was a phenomenon here in El Paraíso Verde in Paraguay because the Earth's magnetic field is weakest here. But that's not the case. We were also told by people from America or Germany that yes, I somehow only manage half of my day even though there are the same number of hours in the day. And we did a little research and yes, our perception is that they have manipulated the perception of time. In other words, they have, well, the day still has 24 hours but according to our perception it practically only has 12 hours. That's why many people only manage half of it, as we've learned. Well, half? At work, for example, what they previously did in 8 hours, they now have to do in 16 hours. Or, as I said, we can only do half of it. And yes, it is also just a perception phenomenon, because time cannot be influenced or manipulated, because in reality it does not really exist. But the perception of time can be played around with and tinkered with, just like with our memories. And yes, we actually found that very exciting. Yes, as you know, we assume also because we have already noticed it ourselves, that there are very, very many timelines, alternative realities in which we also find ourselves, which run parallel to our everyday life or everyday reality. Of course, as a human in the matrix, you only ever perceive one reality. And the interesting thing is that even within this one everyday reality, we occasionally switch timelines. And we don't notice it at all. This is because our perception has been trained in such a way, actually since birth, that we only perceive one reality. put all the experiences and experiences in everyday reality one after the other and assume that they all belong to a single reality. I would even, we even assume that this is a standard program like some other programs that is installed before birth so that the standard time perception program is actually pre-installed in every ego. And when you're born, you actually already have this as part of the overall package, this division of time into linear sections. Yes, and the ego is 
as you say, I see it that way too, programmed to perceive only one reality and only one ego, namely itself. And that is a pair of glasses that you have on, or a filter that is active, and then of course programs the events in everyday reality accordingly. Is it really from birth? It always depends on when the personality entered the physical body. And as soon as a personality has entered a physical body, which is generally called incarnation, then this filter is immediately active. It is, so to speak, a standard program in everyday reality. The ego, the first person personality, or the everyday ego, or whatever you want to call it. And with this, you then perceive time as you perceive it. And interpret everything as a reality on a timeline. And yet we have noticed in expanded states of consciousness that can be achieved through meditation, for example or through spiritual dissociation, that there are many, many more realities besides our everyday. Reality and also many, many more timelines, and that we even keep switching back to this timeline and coming back again. The classic example, which most of you might not or cannot necessarily interpret, is dreaming. So when we go to bed at night, we naturally change the timeline. It's a natural phenomenon, so to speak. And this phenomenon is, so to speak, a time travel obligation that everyone has. Time travel is mandatory every night. This means you lie down in bed, your body falls asleep, and you switch to other timelines. Maybe in three, four, six, ten, twenty different timelines in one night. And when you wake up in the morning, all you remember are a few fragments or nothing. Depending on how good you are at remembering your dreams. Therefore, we assume that approximately 90 to 95 percent of our dreams, or most people's dreams, are based solely on these timeline shifts. What's also interesting is that not only is time not linear, but that you actually exist in every time at the same time. So there is also a Shiva 1995, there is a Shiva from two hours ago. So there are all possible realities in which you exist everywhere at the same time. Even those from 1589 or 1910, and we change there all the time too. This is also the phenomenon of déjà vu. Since we exist simultaneously everywhere we have ever been incarnated. If I was incarnated in Egypt in 890 or don't have a timeline there, then of course I can't switch there. But everywhere I have ever existed, I exist at the same time. In other words, in reality, we are currently living our lives in England. It was 1890 to 1925 or something like that. Yes, that is also the theory for déjà vu. That means the Shiva from 2016 might even get déjà vu from me because I've already experienced things. I may be getting déjà vu from 2028 because even in 2028 I have already experienced the moment now in 2023. And that's where the origin can be traced back to our true self or our higher self, because that's where we went first. Yeah, 
Yes, Einstein also said that time is relative. Yes, very relative. And then he was asked, what does that mean? Time is relative. And then he said, well, an hour at the dentist is a lot longer than an hour at a party. This means that the perceived time, the subjectively perceived time, is really relative. Was at the party for an hour, she's gone. Or an hour at the computer or something. You notice it there too on the computer. Many people have already noticed this. When you sit down in front of a computer, time passes much faster, strangely enough. One gets the impression that it wasn't an hour. And if you were at the dentist or had a discussion with your boss somewhere or something else that made you uncomfortable, interestingly enough, time somehow stretches. And then you say, whoa, I think I talked to my boss for three hours and maybe you were only in the office for half an hour. So you can see that Einstein's statement is correct. Time is relative. And the only object that humanity has that can objectively represent time is the clock. So the clock tells us it's 10 o'clock and after an hour it's 11 o'clock. It doesn't matter whether the hour seemed like five minutes or three hours. Nevertheless, as Shiva said, we have received many messages from people informing us of a phenomenon that they have the feeling that the days are somehow shorter. Yes, they are only half as long. Yes, only half as long or something. The clock shows 24 hours, but when you work on the computer, for example, you notice this too. Or maybe in the office or somewhere else, it doesn't necessarily have to be the computer. Then you realize that in the past, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, I don't know, you could get more done in eight hours than you can today, and we can confirm that too. Nowadays, it seems to us as if we can only manage half of what we would normally have done in eight hours. Maybe it still feels like eight hours or like 20 when you're at work. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you can only do half of it. Yes, or people who, what do I know? You often hear them say that the weekend went by so quickly because they had fun on the weekend. You went to a party, visited friends, got invited or something else, and before you know it, the weekend was over. And then Grey Monday comes again. Or when people talk about the six weeks of summer vacation or eight weeks, it seemed like an eternity and now six to eight weeks have suddenly gone by. Now they're going on vacation and it feels like the eight weeks have been over in a flash. So I strongly assume that the perception of time is being manipulated. Yes, we think so too. Or the Mandela effect. It also shows us that there is something wrong with time and timelines somewhere. We also want to make a video about it soon. And the Mandela effect also shows that there have already been collective timeline changes that many people have noticed. And so each of us is in different timelines. One can currently exist in multiple timelines, as you described. Shiva two hours ago, Shiva yesterday, Shiva tomorrow, or Shiva in 10 years or 20 years ago or whatever. And of course there are also timelines that span centuries. It may well be, as you said, there could well be a Shiva in 1589, but it may look different. But what is interesting is what we have also seen, since we have already seen many of our incarnations and subsequently confirmed to each other, since we have also spent one or two incarnations together, that we look very similar to our current now. Look, so you always take the DNA, I would call it that with you. So I would rather say you take the genetic information with you. 
You've actually always had them with you, even from where you came from before. And that's why you always look similar here on earth. In our life in England, I also looked very similar to myself, only had brown hair. Jonathan also looked very similar, had a slightly longer face, slightly darker hair, but fundamentally always very, very similar. Yes, I've seen that too, for example, in a life we spent together in England, where I had a much longer face and long hair, but the hair was dark brown. And otherwise, I actually looked quite similar, I would say. Yes, in many lives, yes. And why is that? Apparently, you carry your DNA with you throughout your life, which is actually logical, because the mind shapes the DNA. And if the mind shapes the DNA, the DNA of the body, it is also clear that when we enter a new incarnation or enter another incarnation, the DNA is adapted to the mind, then also for a corresponding appearance. In shores. And that's why you can assume that you actually look very similar in many of your lives. Or at least remember that you would always say, I know that face from somewhere. And that also explains, for example, why two strangers can meet and one says to the other, funny, I know you from somewhere. That's what they say then, I know you from somewhere, but it can't be, we've never met in our lives, right in this life. Because it may well be that you have already met in another life and the person looked very similar. That's why they say, you remind me of someone. Or yes, I think you look like someone. Or somehow you look totally familiar to me. Or maybe you look totally familiar to me. Or, you know, sayings like that. Yes. And of course there are connections, including deja vu, as you say. For example, if I dream a certain scene, then it means that in the dream I change the timeline had a certain experience there, perhaps in the year 2024. I jumped there, had an experience there, jumped back into my everyday life, and a year later I had this experience, and then deja vu sets in. Sure, because you've already been in the timeline before. So you weren't personally connected, but you were connected to your own consciousness differently in the timeline. It always seems like you've already experienced it, but you haven't actually been it. Yes, and of course, all lives are also all alternative realities in which there are 35,720 Shivas and 35,720 Jonathans. So that means 2028 is happening right now. Now that today is November 26th, 2023, I believe so. Anyway, there is also the... 2028 will now take place exactly at the same time. How can it be that all the lives are at the same time? But you always talk like in my last life or in my previous life or in my previous previous life and so on. We already do that. People talk like that. Sure, we were programmed that way too. Yes, that's right. We were programmed that way. That means if you see yourself in another life wearing a cowboy hat and there were no cars then, you assume, oh, I had a life in the Wild West. Actually, they say I have a life in the Wild West right now. Yes, actually, that would be correct. And it was already... Yes, how can that be? Imagine your cell phone. You look at your cell phone and you have several gay maps there. Yes, exactly. And each game takes place in a different time. This means that the apps with the different games all exist on your phone at the same time. All you have to do is click on it and boom, you're in the Western era. And when you go out again, all lives are at the same time, all games are at the same time. Then you think, well, I'll play a science fiction game, fly around in the spaceship and collect goods and sell them on the next planet. 
Zach, if you're in, you're in the future. And while you're in the game, you perceive the events one after the other in chronological order. As long as you play the game, because that's how a game is structured. A game is structured in such a way that you just start at some point and develop in the game. You buy an ever better spaceship with ever greater weapons and larger cargo holds. You might then start to get a better title, a better reputation in the game. Yes, and the game was programmed that way from the start. To perceive reality one after the other in a causal form. Yes, your focus is in your life now or on this one app. But if you're really good, you can play on all apps at the same time. Yes, of course, you would have to have a great cell phone for that. A great cell phone or a great consciousness? A great quantum cell phone. Yes, at least you would be able to do that. Theoretically, you would see that all the apps are running at the same time and all the apps are playing at the same time that you are playing and being all of them at the same time in your life. Yes, but if you naturally concentrate on a game and enter a game, then you perceive the game and the game elements one after the other. Like in a chronological sequence, and sure, if you have a great cell phone, you can maybe play five games on five screens at the same time. Or 10 or 20, it depends. How good your concentration and multitasking is. And of course, you could also use breaks. So if, of course, in game three, your character, your avatar, is going to the toilet or reading or... doing something boring like reading or eating or something like that, then you can quickly jump over to the other game and keep playing. And you can then take a quick look at the screen and see is your food ready or has it come back from the bathroom. So you can see what possibilities there are for a being who is outside of the games and uses his avatars. And of course you eat this creature which is outside of all games and serves all avatars. And the avatar or all the avatars may look different but the player always looks the same at long last. At long last. It's the same with you too. You can play 30 games on your computer or on your cell phone and the person holding the cell phone always looks the same. Perception is always the same person with the same appearance and with the corresponding DNA. And that's where you can perhaps begin to understand simultaneity. Because many people always ask us, our lives are all at the same time. How can you imagine that? I don't understand it at all. How is it supposed to work? How can that be? I can't be a cowboy, an Indian and a soldier at the same time. And how is that supposed to work? So I have to experience them one after the other. First an Indian, then a cowboy, then a soldier. And when I'm the cowboy, I say I was an Indian in my previous life and in my next life I'm just a soldier. But you can see from the games that everything can happen at the same time with a Super 6 cell phone, for example. And cell phones are just technological counterparts to our inner commodity capabilities anyway. You can see that with SMS. Sending an SMS or sending a message via WhatsApp or Telegram is also a technological replacement for our telepathic abilities. I could also send a text message telepathically to Shiva, for example. It would then reach her. She would read it and wouldn't need any technology at all. But since many of us have forgotten how telepathy works and we have been trained over the course of our lives 
through school, university, and so on and so forth, that telepathy is not possible or no one can do. It, we need a crutch. Yes, and in our dreams, that's where we can begin to understand that there are other timelines. The problem is just like in our everyday lives, when you're in a dream, you still think you're the one from everyday life. You think because you take the knowledge and your self-image about yourself with you into the dream, so to speak. In reality, that's not the case at all, because when you go into a dream, you connect to another timeline or to another alternative self or a parallel self in its own everyday world. And from then on, you perceive what he perceives. And of course, it can also happen that For example, you experience yourself dying. We made a video about that too, right? What happens if you die in a dream? And you should definitely take a look there. Also very exciting and ties in quite well with this video here. And so we do it every night. We dream of other time ministries in which we operate. So I also remember, and I think you probably do too, a lot of dreams in which you somehow travel through time. And there is also a so-called time self. And this time self is also able to consciously enter different timelines. I also have some memories of dreams in which I perceived myself from the perspective of this time self. Very exciting. We also made a video about it. I think it's even called the time self. Yes, exactly. Those of you who are interested in time travel should take a look. That's right. That's exciting. And then it was the case that I was in a time self of mine or was connected to the consciousness of my time self and was able to perceive from its perspective. And a dreamer who is trained, for example, can recognize in a dream either that he is dreaming or he can also recognize that he is not the well-known everyday self from the normal physical reality that he is. used to, but that he has now been coupled to an alternative version of himself with his consciousness and can then collect information about other timelines. For example, someone who keeps a dream diary, this is a person who records his travels into other timelines, but your teacher or professor at university will never portray it that way. If you say, yes, I am a time traveler, every night I travel through timelines and record my time travels. But anyone who keeps a dream diary is actually a time travel researcher because they record and record their trips into other timelines. And people who don't remember their dreams who wake up in the morning and have zero memory, well, those are people who don't have that much interest in time travel. <laughs> yes, in any case, timelines are a very exciting topic. It can also be observed that we switch back and forth in timelines during everyday life. Have you already noticed? We have already received a few letters from people who say the same thing. We kind of oscillate between two timelines because sometimes I'm in a timeline where I have a rosy, wonderful future ahead of me and everything is positive. And then I switch back to a timeline where everything is somehow a little darker, more depressive, and the future isn't so bright after all. Just say apocalyptic. And time travel and switching to other timelines happens completely automatically. For example, now that you are sitting in front of your computer or your cell phone and watching our video.
Could you prove that it is really Sunday at the moment you are watching the video? You don't know if it's really Sunday. Because it could have been Monday for an hour in between. This is definitely Monday. And you wouldn't notice it at all. Why don't you notice that? Ego filter. The ego has the task of classifying all sequences of experiences, even if they affect other timelines, into one reality and arranging them in time. And that's just the point. During everyday life and also in dreams, we travel through timelines without really noticing it. Maybe in everyday life you can travel for a minute, but in your dreams you can also travel for a longer period of time, perhaps to another year or another century. This is a very exciting topic with timelines. There is also, for example, the dark series that we watched, a great series because it can give you an understanding of time travel across different timelines, even for beginners, so that you can get an understanding of what we actually mean. We're not saying that everything that's portrayed in the series is true or that we would really agree with everything as a hundred percent as they portray it. But it's very well done, isn't it? Yes, dear ones, then until the next time travel video or we will also cover the topic of time in sections. Certainly because it is an exciting topic. And yes, see you next Sunday. Yes. Ciao. A nice time. Ciao. Amara.org community captions.